What's going on, guys, and welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I Graham G. S. Matthews break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the August 13th, 2022 edition of I Almost Said Talking Smack. It's the SmackDown Lowdown. Gotta get used to saying that. Uh, hosted by Matt Camp, and this week, Scott Stanford breaking down all the latest from Friday's SmackDown in the studio. So they start off the show running down the biggest headlines from Friday's eventful edition of SmackDown, which I already broke down in its entirety here on the channel in an audio review. So if you haven't already done that, checked it out, please do so. I would appreciate it. Um, they also recap the Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah versus Zaylee and Shanti tag team match that saw Raquel and Aaliyah advance to the next round of the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. They also preview the bracket. So next week, they're going to face, well, the match isn't going on next week, but Ultimately, they will face the winners of next week's Sonya Deville and Natalia versus Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons tag team match. And the Raw side next Monday and Raw, it's going to be Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. The winners of that match will then face Dakota Kai and Io Sky in the semifinals on the Raw side. So backstage, Raquel Rodriguez tells uh, Megan Morant, I almost said uh, Kayla Braxton, but she was not on Talking Smack this week. Raquel tells Megan Morant that Aaliyah is a ray of sunshine and can, she, she could not have asked for a better partner. And uh, this win just kind of makes her feel full of confidence that they're riding a wave of momentum right now. Aaliyah says that they are called Bougie and the Beast, which is uh, honestly a clever nickname. I'll give them credit for that. And that they would love to face Natalia and Sonya ultimately in the semifinals. So looking already past Zoe Stark and Akita Alliance, despite their NXT roots, which they did mention here in this, uh, in this interview. So back in the studio, Booker, who was the analyst for this episode, says that Aaliyah is going to have to step it up. Matt Camp agrees that Natalia and DeVille are probably the favorites to not only advance to the semifinals, but probably win the whole thing given their experience. I disagree. I think there's, it's pretty likely they advance next week, but they are not winning the whole thing. I'd be shocked if they did, honestly. And I don't really want to see them advance and, and win the whole thing. I like DeVille, but Natalia is just completely go away heat with me, change the channel type shit. So please, no, no thank you. Um, Booker says that he agrees and Natalia and DeVille will be the most formidable threat in this entire tournament, which again, I disagree. I think that would be Dakota Kai and Io Sky, but whatever. Although they did struggle to beat Dana Brooke and Tamina on Monday's Raw, so I will say that. From there, they recap the Drew McIntyre and Mad Cat Moss win over the Usos in tag team action. Backstage, Mad Cat Moss tells Megan Morant that uh, he has history with McIntyre. He does not like Drew McIntyre from earlier this year. He doesn't mention the fact Drew almost fucking killed him, almost ended his career on an Aaron Alabama slam, but he does not like Drew from a storyline standpoint, but he respects him. He calls him crazy for going out there and fighting the Usos on his own, knew he had to join him, did, they won, and uh, he always enjoys seeing Sami Zayn get beat up as well. Matt Camp says it's smart for Mad Cat Moss to link up with Drew McIntyre, and he also acknowledges, now that McIntyre is challenging for the top championship at Clash of the Castle, Matt Camp also acknowledges the last one-on-one -on -one match between Rowan Reigns and Drew McIntyre, which was not at WrestleMania 35, I think it would have been, but rather Survivor Series 2020, when Roman beat Drew in a champion versus champion non-title matchup. And Roman picked up the win that night due to interference from the Usos, or rather just specifically Jay Uso, Paul Heyman was ringside. Come Clash of the Castle in Cardiff, Wales, Drew's going to have that hometown advantage. Now, he's not from Cardiff, obviously, but he has that home field advantage in Europe. So Camp acknowledges that, feels McIntyre has that momentum on his side as a result. And he calls it the biggest match of Drew's career. Uh, from there, they replay and recap the Ronda Rousey return and the subsequent contract signing between Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler. They also recap Gunther beating Shinsuke Nakamura to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Kaiser and Gunther are interviewed backstage by Megan Moran. Ludwig Kaiser says that Gunther will establish that Intercontinental Championship's prestige, which I hope he does if Friday was any indication as far as how they presented and positioned that championship on the show. Uh, Gunther says that championship stands for tradition, it stands for dignity, and it stands for respect, and that he's going to show that with every defense. Ludwig Kaiser says that Gunther will take that respect from every opponent he's in the ring with. Uh, Booker notices that there was no wasted motion from Gunther on SmackDown, but he was in for a fight against Nakamura, and Nakamura took him to his limit, and the competition from here for Gunther as Intercontinental Champion is only going to get tougher. Scott Stanford compares the uh, makes the comparison of Gunther to Killer Kowalski, which is a very interesting comparison. Was not expecting to hear that, but I can't say I entirely disagree. 
Uh, from there, they wrap up the show by recapping the Ronda stuff, and Booker says that Rousey's back for only one reason, and that's to be the SmackDown Women's Champion. Matt Camp says that uh, Rousey may have tapped into a killer instinct now that she's back, and Booker from there previews Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler versus, uh, or rather for, the SmackDown Women's Championship at Clash of the Castle next month. So, solid edition of the SmackDown lowdown here. Really nothing out of the ordinary. The interviews were very brief. We got to hear from Gunther and Kaiser. We heard from Mad Cat Moss. And we heard from Raquel and, and uh, Aaliyah. So, fine stuff here. And a nice way to wrap up what I thought was a very good edition of SmackDown. And especially by recent SmackDown standards. Because that show has sucked for a very long time now. And I'm glad we're headed back in the right direction. Thank you guys for checking out my review of the SmackDown Lowdown for August 13, 2022. I appreciate it. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Also, hit the bell button, uh, bell button to be notified, rather. Easy for me to say. To be notified every time a new video goes up, including tomorrow. First thing Sunday. Hopefully first thing. I'm not sure yet still. But it's going to be Shawn Michaels here on the show talking to myself about the a e documentary on D-Generation X airing tomorrow on a e So look for that tomorrow. Shawn Michaels here on the channel coming off the recent interviews with Goldberg and The Undertaker and Lex Luger, among many others. So if you haven't already checked out you know, those interviews, please do so and check out the Shawn one here tomorrow on the channel. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.